So, now can you guess the answer to some of our questions? Sound can never really create that level of pressure. I mean, not never really, but it's very hard to create. Enough to break a glass. But what it can do is that if you just take a piece of glass and find out what its natural frequency is, and then play sound that is very close to that. The glass begins to oscillate just a little. The amplitude is very, very small, not even close to enough to break it. But given enough time, with this frequency playing, the glass begins to oscillate more and more and more. Its amplitude increases to a point where it's almost like somebody's holding the glass in, trying to break it apart, and then it cracks. The same thing is true with bridges as well. It's the same story. If soldiers are walking in step, then they have the concept of an overall frequency. Right? It might so happen, and it's very rare in these days, but it might so happen in the olden times that that might be close to the natural frequency of that particular bridge, or sometimes a multiple, but even that's good enough. Then what might happen? The bridge begins to start having a larger and larger and larger amplitude, and then it eventually breaks. So nowadays what they do is they, they put dampers on these large bridges, huge hydraulic dampers, so that if this happens, we stop it. So that must be a question in your mind too, okay? When we spoke about damping, one of the questions of yours must be, each of these cars and bikes have suspensions, which are basically just springs, which are very tough. Right? It's, it's just spring, but you can't really press it very easily. And why are they there? So that when the car passes over some obstacle, the spring compresses and doesn't pass on the jump to the people sitting inside. But if the spring were ideal, what must happen? After they get off that, the spring must keep oscillating. It never loses kind of it never loses its energy. So your entire ride will be a really, really bouncy one. Yeah, but we do put dampers there as well to make it so that the spring eventually ends up stopping. So both damping and forcing an oscillation have applications. And this particular last application, which is the driving force being very close to the natural frequency has a name. Yeah, it's called resonance. Yeah, I know when I say resonance, you think of benzene rings and electrons floating between them to a point of having an electron cloud, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about resonance in physics. And if you're wondering why we keep using the same words over and over again, think harder and maybe, maybe you'll get to the answer. So this resonance in physics actually has a lot of applications. A lot of times musical instruments work on this principle. And a lot of what we're going to talk about after this, waves on a string, guitars, and sound and acoustics, flutes and other wind instruments, are all going to be quite a bit connected to the ideas that we've learned in this particular chapter. To keep learning with such engaging videos, download Baiju's, the learning app today.